Deformity can be extra-articular deformity, juxta-articular deformity, and leg length discrepancy. And the goals that I'm trying to address are limb realignment, to normalize the forces across the knee joint, perhaps delay the need for knee replacement, but importantly, in this, patient, in this group of patients with arthrosis, set the stage for total knee replacement rather than compromise it. And in some cases, it's going to be an alternative to knee replacement, either because knee replacement is contraindicated or sometimes patients really just don't want the, the uh, arthroplasty. So I, I'm going to talk about some of the things we need to think about uh, for these complex uh, primary knee replacements. So w when I see somebody and I see a patient that is going to need a complex primary knee replacement, what do I think about? The first thing that I say to myself, I say to the fellows, I say to the residents, is this isn't a primary knee replacement. This is a revision knee replacement that just doesn't have implants in yet. And I, I think if you just take that step and you say complex primary equals revision, then you start thinking about all the principles that we think about in revision knee replacement, and we follow those same principles. And so, you know, the... The issue of bone loss in total knee replacements is, is an interesting problem. We are going to not only be faced with, and I'm sure I get a lot of this up in my community, where a lot of the community doctors are not fully comfortable taking care of an infected joint, and so it gets sent to the orthopedic oncologist because we're the ones that are used to taking care of working with megaprostheses. Um, there's a lot of issues involved with these patients. Obviously, the risk, the, the fact that you've got bone deficiency, but you also have uh, huge amounts of soft tissue deficiency and a lot of instability. And so usually in these patients, you're not just addressing one issue, which is the bone loss. You're usually addressing bone and the soft tissue uh, problem. Infection is a major concern, and I'm going to talk about some of the numbers that we have for that for some of these more complex cases. I think we've all been here. It's Friday afternoon. You've got a nice vacation booked south of France. You've got two weeks off. You've got a small office, just follow-up patients, and Mr. Smith comes in unbooked. He's got an ace bandage on his knee, just sitting in the waiting room. He's your last patient of the day. And you figure, oh, just a little wound problem, no big deal. Well, a little wound problem isn't such a, uh, an issue unless it looks like this. And this is a big problem, as you all know. And unfortunately, it's a problem in arthroplasty. When do you make the decision to say, we're not going to revise this with another revision, uh, we're going to say, okay, there's no more motion. We're going to do the, the fusion. And, uh, you know, what's your, what's your threshold? Understanding that the, the more revisions, the more likely that your knee fusion will fail and you'll end up with an amputation. Where it becomes an easy decision for me, and it's, look, it's never an easy decision. When it becomes an easier decision is infection plus extensor mechanism compromise. I think when you've got those two together, it's pretty straightforward that this is probably the best option. Um, look, I personally, if a patient needs a knee fusion, that's a failure on my part. You know, they come to me not because they want a knee fusion. They come to me because they want their knee to bend and they, they want to be able to walk. So I think infection plus extensor mechanism compromise, multiple infections, bad host, patients that have been through this. I just saw a guy that came into me a couple of weeks ago. He's been um, up in Westchester. He's had 14 operations for infection in his knee. It's been two years, and he's tired of it. So, so I think that's part of it as well, is when these patients come in, some of them are just looking for a, what can you do to finally fix this? And that, uh, I think he came and saw you uh, the next day.